It's called a glass display cupboard. Beveled glass panels in the upper section with a couple adjustable shelves. Down below, a closed storage area with more shelves. The whole piece is finished off in a high gloss white paint. It's perfect for the or this way, or else the biscuits will not align. And I simply cut a slot. One in that board. One in that board. And with that gives me our two slots that are perfectly aligned. So when I glue it up, it's gonna be just the right spot. Now the gluing steps are first to put some glue in the slots. And you don't need one of these fancy tools. You could actually use just a brush. But the tool has the shape of a biscuit and there's a couple little holes there that the glue comes out metering just the right amount. Now once the slots are filled, the next thing to do is take one of these glue bottles with a roller and roll a thin coat onto each board. Not too much, just a nice even coat. And when that's done, I'm ready to start installing the biscuits. And they just get either pushed in or tapped in. Flip them down, slide them together and clamp them up. Just enough pressure to squeeze the joint tight, no more. It doesn't look it, but this cabinet is actually made in two pieces. There's a base cabinet and an upper cabinet screwed together. It makes it easier to move. You can break it down into two pieces. The base cabinet is made up of three panels, one on each end and the panel door. Now here's one of the side panels. This is a very traditional way of making cabinets. If I pull this apart, you'll see we have two rails and two styles. All the styles and rails have this groove and this little bead detail. And the rails have a cope which fits the pieces together. And with glue, that's a very strong joint. We'll make these pieces at the router station. The router bits that I'm going to use are sold as a door making set. They're not inexpensive, but you can make a lot of doors. Here's one of the bits. The one that's installed in the router now will make the cope cut on the end of the rails all in one pass. The other thing that I need to make cope cuts is this jig, which slides in the miter track. It holds the stock down tight to the table and against the fence. I could never do this freehand, and even with just a standard miter gauge, without the clamp, it would walk around. What I do is take my piece of stock, put it in the jig, and there's another problem with making rails or cope cuts. The bit turns in this direction, so as it comes through the back side of the piece, it wants to tear away material. So it's just a simple matter of taking some scrap and putting a backer there, which will solve that problem. Now I just run it through slowly. Now theoretically, I should be able to pull this back through even while the bit's running. But any little movement or lifting of this jig, it's going to catch, ruin the piece, and it's dangerous. So it's worth taking the time to shut down, pull it back, spin the piece around, reinstall it, and repeat the process. Now I've switched bits and I'm running a sample. I've made about three or four adjustments and I want to make sure that when this comes together that I'm flush on both sides and that's good. Now the issue with running rails is that you don't want it to ride up. So I'm going to install a feather board just to make sure that the stock stays tight to the table. And now it's just a matter of running all the rails and styles through on one edge. Well, now it's time for a little assembly. We're just using a brush to brush glue on those tenons that are formed on the rails. And I've already brushed some glue in the styles. And I'll just slip these together. 
They go in at each end. And then I'm going to install the panel. Now, the panel is made out of quarter-inch plywood, and I've sized it to be a little bit smaller than the actual opening. Even though it's plywood, it could expand a bit, and I don't want it to buckle. So that slides in dry, no glue. Then I put on the other style, and we'll clamp it up. All right, now a quick check for squareness. There's actually not much I can do at this point. As long as all my cuts were nice and square, it should be OK. And that's pretty good. Now we'll set it aside and glue up the other one. Let's take another look at our prototype. The upper cabinet has a glass panel on each side and the glass panel door. Now over here is one of the side panels just dry fitted together. You can see the beveled glass, the bevel faces out. And I gotta say, this stuff is expensive, but it's worth it. Now if I flip it over, you can see the other side and you see that the glass sits in a rabbit. If I had set this in a groove and I broke the glass, it would be very difficult to repair. Now, for the panels that we made for the lower cabinet, this was the profile, bead and a groove. For the glass panels, same bead, but a rabbit this time. Now, I don't need another router bit set to make those rabbits for the glass panels. I can reconfigure the existing set that we just used. I've removed the nuts and the washers. On this style set, I'm gonna take this bearing off, add another washer, just as a spacer, and then I come over to the cope set and remove this cutter and slide that on. This becomes the new style bit, and I'll put the nuts back on in a second. Now for the cope end, I take the bearing from the style set, slide that on, and put the nuts on. That's all there is to it. Now once again, I'm starting with the cope cut on the ends of all the rails. Now I've installed the modified style bit, and I've reinstalled the featherboard. Now I can make that rabbit in all the rails and styles of each panel. All right, for the assembly, once again, some glue on the styles and the rails. Slip the pieces together, clamp them up. With the glue-ups that we made first thing this morning dry, I removed them from the clamps. Now it's just a matter of sanding them smooth. These will become shelves in our cabinet. Well, now I turn to my homemade panel cutter, simply made up of a piece of plywood with a runner underneath, which rides in the miter gauge slot, and a fence up at this back edge. I'm gonna use this to square up and cut to length the panels, which have been sanded and ripped and jointed to the correct width. I set it against the fence and square up one end to start. With that end nice and square, I can now mark it for length. And in this case, that's gonna be 23 inches. Flip it around, line it up with the back of my fence right here because that comes right next to the saw blade and make the next cut. After I removed the side panels from the clamps, I sanded them all smooth, and I've just made a dado in one of the lower cabinet sides using the stacked cutter. Now that's going to receive one of these shelves. It'll be the fixed bottom shelf. With my sacrificial fence installed, I'm now able to use the dado to create a rabbit. And this is along the bottom of the upper cabinet side panel, and that's going to receive a shelf. With 
with a slight adjustment to the fence and raising the cutter slightly, I'm able to create this rabbit along the back edge of the panel, and that'll conceal the quarter-inch plywood back. All the panels get one of these. Well, good morning. I'm getting started today on our shelf support system. Now, let's take a look at the prototype. Each style of the cabinet has a series of holes, and they're one inch on center, quarter inch holes. And they have to align so that when the shelf is in place, it sits flat. Now the easiest way to do that is to use a jig. Now, this is a homemade jig, just a piece of plywood with a series of holes. The most critical hole is the center one. This is the center line of the jig, which I align with the center line on the style. That sets the up-down locations. Then there's a little bit of a stop here, which I can move in and out, and that controls the distance the holes will be from the edge of the style, in this case, an inch and three-eighths. I use a router with a collar that fits just inside those little holes of the jig, and a quarter-inch bit, just a matter of routing out the holes that I want. Let's take another look at the prototype. I want to work on the top of the base cabinet and the top of this upper cabinet. The side panels in both cases fit into a dado. Now, I don't want that dado to come all the way through because it would show on the front. So the best way to do that is to use a router. I've set up a straight edge. I have a three-quarter inch straight cutting bit. The straight edge is the guide for the router base. I'll cut right along this line and stop at this point right here. Yesterday, I made rabbits in the side panels to receive the plywood back. At that top shelf, I also need a rabbit that runs from one dado to the other. That's easily done with my router, which is set up with a rabbiting fit. Now let's do the round over of three sides on the top and middle shelf. And for that, I've equipped the router with a 3 8 inch radius bit. Now flip it over and do the other side. Finally, we're ready for some assembly. Now, this is the base cabinet, and this is the bottom shelf. A little glue in that dado, set it in place, and then I'm gonna just hold it square and toenail it with some inch and a quarter brads. You really only need the brads to hold it while the glue dries. And here's the other side. Now, with the top of that base upside down and some glue in the dados, Bring them over the sides, drop them in place, and nail them. All right, now for the back. And this is a very important piece. Quarter inch birch plywood. And what this does is it ties all the sides and together, and it adds incredible strength. It has the additional advantage of holding the case square. Now this is the upper case and this is the bottom shelf that fits into the rabbit. Glued and nailed once again. And now another piece of quarter inch plywood for the back. Let's take another look at our prototype. Each section of the cabinet has a face frame, and that provides some mass to the cabinet, and it also gives an opening for the doors. I've already cut the rails and styles for the upper cabinet, and now the trick is to get a nice tight joint between those pieces. I'm gonna use pocket screw technology. I have this machine which has a router underneath. When I push the lever forward, a router bit comes up, and it cuts a sloped slot. 
When I pull it forward, a drill bit comes out and that cuts a hole for the screw. It's quick, it's strong, and it's perfect for this type of application. Dab a glue on the end of the rail, press them together so they're even, and a nice long screwdriver bit helps. It really sucks that joint together, and I'll tell you, it is strong. Now it's just a matter of a little bit of glue setting it on the case and attaching it with some one and a half inch brads. Now a little glue block behind the rail just to give it a little extra support. Let's take another look at the prototype. I wrapped the base of the cabinet with this molding. It's all one piece. I'll form it at the router table. I used a half inch radius bit to form that profile. I've mitered all the corners on the base and I'm going to reinforce that miter with a biscuit and some glue. Now all I have to do is nail it in place. At the top of our cupboard, I've taken a piece of one by two and machined a cove in it, just a little decorative element. So some glue and brads will take care of this molding. Once that's set in place, let's hang some doors. Now the hinges that I'm using are a no mortise hinge. They just mount right on the surface of the door. I like to put them on the door first and then bring them over to the style. This wraps around the back of the style, which is going to be good, particularly for this top door, which will be heavy with the glass. Now, one more piece of wood up behind this top rail, and that'll act as a stop for the door. All right, the shelves. The two shelves that go in the glass case, I'm wrapping all three edges because you're going to see them with this three-quarter inch poplar that I rounded over at the router table. For the shelf that goes down below, I'll just treat the front edge. And that takes care of the woodworking. A little bit of sanding here, and we'll bring this piece into the finishing room. We're going to finish our cupboard like that one in Atlanta. We're going to paint it a nice hospital white. I've dusted the piece off, and I'm applying the first coat, which is an alkyd primer. Once this dries, we'll put on a couple coats of brilliant white finish, high gloss, and then we'll be ready for the glass and the hardware. All right, well, here it is with a couple coats of brilliant white finish on it, and it's looking great. I've reinstalled the glass, the beveled glass, and these stops will hold it in place. I'm just securing those with some pin nails. All right, a couple shelves in the display area. This piece is going to play nicely in the bathroom. I wonder if my wife will give me a little room for my shaving supplies. It won't take much space. Now let me show you what we're going to build next time. It's called a media press. Nicely shaped and carved legs, plenty of draw storage with some nice brasses, and I have these doors which swing all the way around, flush to the cabinet. Inside, plenty of room for a good sized TV. A media press next time right here in the New Yankee Workshop. <laughs>